Hey there guys and welcome back to ARK. Today I'm going to show you how to tame a Pteranodon and be able to catch your first flying dinosaur and see ARK in a whole new light. Literally it will change your world once you realize that you can fly and you'll hate it again once you're back on ground and you're like, I want to fly again. Flying is one of the most beautiful things in ARK and you will get addicted to this game just because you caught a Pteranodon and in this video I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright, so we're going to need a couple of things. The first thing is a crossbow that you can craft at a smithy. It's preferred to use a crossbow instead of a normal bow, as a crossbow will kind of put things to sleep a lot quicker than a normal bow will. And make sure you do have tranquilizer arrows. You're going to need at least 10 to 20, depending on the level of the pteranodon that you're trying to catch. Do make sure you bring some raw meat because raw meat is what it eats and we've got some over here and we're going to use this to tame the pteranodon once we've put it to sleep. Now usually a lot of people just do it from just those few steps but you want to make sure that you catch the pteranodon and you don't want to struggle too much. If you are a new player you want to give yourself every single advantage. I'm going to go even the beyond the extra mile. You can normally just craft a bola which is right over here and you can make them quite cheaply at a low level of level 9 for 15 fiber, 3 hide, 3 stone and 10 thatch. So make a couple just in case you miss. I'll be showing you how to throw them and how to catch a Pteranodon in the sky with one of these as well. Another good thing is if you're trying to get a Pteranodon that is level 150 or really, really high level and you want it to stay on the ground as long as possible, make sure you bring a bear trap with you which costs 5 fiber, 6 hide and 3 metal ingots and can be crafted at your local smithy. And we're just going to make one quick and we're going to use this and I'm going to show you the strategy for catching a Pteranodon in a few seconds. So there's one in the distance. Let's go have a look at what level it is. Generally, this is the time you want to start focusing on what level the Pteranodon is. That is a Tapajara. We don't need one of those. There's a Pteranodon. It's a lot smaller than the Tapajara and it is right over here. So we're going to... We're going to catch this thing. If this one is a high level, we're going to need to use the bear trap. Let's see what level it is. It's level 60. That's a decent first tame. Honestly, I would go for it at this point because depending on the server you're playing at, a level 150 might be really hard to catch. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to let it be in the sky for a bit, right? Now, the typical behavior of a Pteranodon is to fly around roughly in a circle just in the same area. They're not really going to leave unless I shoot at it. If I shoot at it right now, it's going to fly off full speed in one direction and you'll most likely never see it again. That is really the hardest way to, to deal with it. Now, there's two times that you can throw a bola on it. Once, whether it's in the sky, if you have enough bolas or you have a reusable bola mod, which is fantastic where you can throw hundreds of them. But usually throwing from here to up there is not an easy thing to do. Would be, would be really funny if I did that the first time. Usually, um, you don't want to go for that method. Usually, you want to wait for it to land. And believe me, they will land. Just have some patience. Make sure the area is safe and there's nothing dangerous like the Spinosaurus right over there just, you know, chilling, killing things, which is completely not scary at all. And what we're going to do is we're going to bolo this. And now he won't be able to escape. And we're going to use our bear trap right underneath him. And now if he makes a move, he is going to activate the bear trap and be stuck there even longer. What we're going to do is shoot it in the face until it goes to sleep. It should be about a few shots, like sometimes maybe up to six. As long as you're shooting it in the face, it will go sleep, go to sleep a lot faster. Don't shoot it in the body. Be an asshole. Shoot it in the face. It will literally go to sleep three times faster if you shoot it in the face. And now all you have to do is put the meat in the inventory of the Pteranodon and it will slowly tame. I'm sure you guys already know, but the higher the level of the dinosaur, the longer it will take to tame and the more food it will eat. It's also important to be aware that the dinosaur can wake up sometimes way before you've even tamed it, especially if you're playing close to vanilla rates. So you can see the taming here is on 16%, but the unconscious bar is slowly going down. And once that purple bar disappears, this dinosaur could wake up. The way to keep a dinosaur asleep is to have narcotics on hand and put some in the inventory and force feed it. So this is done by pressing E or you can right click and consume. Pressing E is obviously the, the better option. The purple bar is seen in the torpidity over here. So you can see if this gets close to zero, he will wake up. 
Obviously, as we shot him up with Trank Darts, this goes higher. You don't want to damage him. You don't want to use a Trank Arrow here and go like, okay, well, I'll just make him sleep some more and shoot him. You don't want to do that because you can see there's a taming effectiveness of 99.2%, which will give me an extra 29 levels if he wakes up, at least right now. Taming effective goes down over time as, as the, and the food that he eats. So generally, you want to give him the best food so that he tames the quickest with the highest taming effectiveness, giving you more levels. So instead of him being a level 60 when we tame him, he he will be a level, what's that, like 89? 89, which is actually pretty decent. So don't shoot him to make sure he stays asleep. Put narcotics in his inventory and make him forcefully eat it like this so that you can see his torpidity is going back up, which means he's going back to sleep. But once he's tamed, he'll wake up, so don't worry about that. As soon as he's tamed, he wakes up immediately. Doesn't matter how tired or how unconscious he is. We tamed the Paternodon and we named him a thousand Ds because... That is literally how long it took. And there's a Spinosaurus. Holy shit. Oh shit, the Spinosaurus is coming here. We gotta run. That was just in time too. Look at the Spinosaurus, guys. He's right over there. We gotta get away from him. All right, so we've got our Pteranodon, all safe and sound. I'm gonna whistle it to stop following me so that we'll land on the ground somewhere here. And right now, we need to craft a saddle. Now, a saddle for a Pteranodon is actually one of the hardest things to get early on in the game. You have to be level 38, so it is quite up there in terms of levels. And you need 75 chitin or keratin, 125 fiber and 230 hide so it is not an easy one to get especially that chitin or keratin and the way you get those two resources are by killing creatures that have like either horns or like a shell here is your carbonemus which is a shelled creature and we're gonna send our raptors right off to them so that he can kill it and he can collect the keratin for us it's actually better if we manage to harvest it ourselves, but the, the raptor should kill it and harvest it anyway. And let's check their inventories. Do they have some? Five on him and six on him. That's not enough. The trilobite is actually a really good thing that we can kill as well. Now, if you find those things around in the world, you're actually super lucky because those things, which can be found really around this side of the map and some other places in the map, but this is the only location that I know that it actually really frequently spawns. And like, it will be around the water area over here. And you'll see that it actually drops a lot of useful stuff like chitin, silica pearls, oil, black pearls, which are actually really rare. And you can see some oil, silica pearls, and more chitin right over here. So if you manage to find one of those, make sure you do kill it because it is a treasure trove of resources. And now we can craft a saddle for our Pteranodon. So we've got a crafting, we've got a PT, and you should be able to find <laughs> Raptor and as well as the Pteranodon over here. Make sure you craft the right one. And now all you have to do is go to your Pteranodon and grab the saddle, place it in the saddle slot over there, and you might want to level up his stamina. His stamina is the most important thing. Don't worry about his weight. His weight is absolutely atrocious. If your inventory is too heavy, you're not flying anywhere anyway. So you're not going to be using this to fly. You're going to be using it to scout. Now, the reason why stamina is so important is because your Pteranodon can only fly for a short amount of time. But the fact that you can fly at all is absolutely great. Like, look how you can see the world with completely different eyes. You can now use this Pteranodon to scout your areas and make informed decisions or even try find unique dinosaurs that you're looking for around the map. But be careful because your stamina bar goes down really quickly and especially if you do these special moves like this over here, which you usually press C, which I actually have swapped around so it's actually control for me, kind of drains your, your stamina really quickly. And what, what happens when your stamina ends is you come crashing down to the planet like this. Like, I didn't land on purpose. The, the Pteranodon ran out of stamina and fell to the ground. You want to make sure that you're not over an ocean when this happens, because if you land in the ocean, pretty much you and the Pteranodon are going to just get stuck in the ocean like this. Well, he'll actually kind of like just start floating. He won't go in the water. But you will fall off into the water, and if there's sharks or anything around, you are screwed. And it's very hard to get back on the PT. If you want to get far, 
without actually having to land because obviously landing is how you kind of recover your your stamina so you go like this it's obviously spacebar to land spacebar to take off spacebar to land obviously again and now when you stand still just like your normal character your stamina for the pteranodon at the top right will slowly go up again and once it's full it's recommend that you start flying again so if you're flying across the map make sure you find locations that are high up like for example this over here which is a perfect place to to quickly look around make sure there's no raptors or anything that's going to kill me immediately and then also when you do get levels for the pteranodon it is actually best to put them into stamina not wait like i said earlier and then accident clicked you want to put them into stamina so that you can fly longer another cool thing you should know about pteranodons is they are able to pick up smaller dinosaurs something like even like a dodo i think there's a dodo right over here let's pick it up you right click and there we go we've picked up a dodo and now you can take it wherever you want it if you want to kill it you want to tame it you want to take it somewhere safe so that you can kill it so it's not in a dangerous place this is a, a helpful thing, but not really for a Pteranodon. Uh, you can pick up other players. This is something you should be careful of because other players in PvP might do this and pick you up and take you up right in the sky and drop you to your death and loot you. This can also be done on PvE servers usually, so, so be very careful of other players and Pteranodons flying around you. And that's all I have to tell you about the Pteranodons in Ark and how to tame them and what they're used for. I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you guys in a future one. Thank you so much for watching.